Coming up next on the show, we have Amani Simpson, a young man with quite an inspiring story. He is now a producer and is the founder of Aviat Inspires CIC. How did I get here? Because I'm laying down on my deathbed and I heard what the end said. There's only two ways. You either fly or you end up dead. No thanks to you. I cried out for you like mum always told me to, but you weren't there. What kind of God would allow us to go through so much pain? Amani. Amani hey. Simpson. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's okay. Thanks for having me. Amani, I've been, not that I've been trying to get hold of you, mm. but I got your father to get hold of you for me. Oh, my, <laughs> my on-screen father. <laughs> your on-screen father. Yeah. And uh, yes, that is Mr. Paul McKenzie. Mm -hmm. Paul McKenzie was being a guest on my show already. Uh, very good guy. And um, it's, in, it's, it's good. Uh, in my opening, I said uh, a young man who is well-inspired, going places. Mm. But the climate that we're in now in yeah. the UK, the climate that we're now in the UK with the whole advent of uh, a knife crime and all those sort of things is what somewhat has put you on the forefront because of your experience. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I'll let you explain that a bit more. But one of the things I want to ask you first is, Aviad inspires CIC, a media and events organization centered around community research to steer young people in the right direction. What I want you to do is share with us now a little bit of your organization and how the public can get involved. But before that is steering young people in the right direction. Why we need to steer young people in the right direction? Um, I definitely believe that you know, when you're looking at the problem that is quite prevalent in London and across the UK with knife crime and youth violence, yes. that's all about the mindset. You know, these young people are trapped in uh, a kind of revolving cycle of bad choices yes and um, there's not enough to be done to challenge them so for me it's all about creating platforms and environments that they can be empowered um, and yeah that's that's really what I stand for yeah now in order for a person to get a sort of understanding um, tell us a bit about your story mm -hmm. um, Amani because you've got a powerful story yeah so um, I was stabbed seven times when I was 21 mm -hmm. um, intervening in an argument uh, over some stolen goods and uh, it was an eye-opening experience to say the least it definitely gave me a lot more understanding of why i'm here um you know I, I was fighting for my life in the ambulance and the conversation i had i believe i had a conversation with god where i said you know what if you give me another chance i'm gonna live my life in a, in mm. a better way and empower young people and you know i'm, I'm still here so i yes. believe i've got a reason to be here and someone said to me the other day, it's great bad timing because as much as you don't want to be talking about it now, it's needed. You know, yes. it's a beacon of hope for a lot of parents and young people. Yes. So happy my story can be shared. Uh, you, you mentioned that um, you, you're intervening mm -hmm. in an altercation yeah. or you, you were innocent party. Yeah, so I, yeah. I, f I forgot my purpose. I, I used to hand out flyers. So you mentioned before about Aviard. Aviard yeah. is about 10, 11 years old as a company. Okay, um, but so this was before it, the fact? Yeah, no, so yeah, but the Aviard CIC, Inspire CIC, is a new version of that. It's the new limited company in right. that sense, or new CIC. Yes. Um, but before we were called Aviard Entertainment. And so we used to do parties and um, management of music and things like that. But I lost the purpose I was going for. I went mm. there, I got distracted. I forgot that actually I'd come just to fly for the event and not get involved in anyone else's problems. Yes, yes. And in process of doing that, I ended up coming face to face with someone that was willing to stab me and try and take my life. So, yeah. you know, uh, one of the things that I encourage young people is that when you are on track, try and stay that way rather than deviating and getting kind yeah. of dragged out into other things. And, 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 and I guess that is why you have this, where you steer young people in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Is it because uh, young people are a bit, what, what should I say, impressionable? Yeah, that's one word. To put it, I think, you know, impressionable is good. Um, also, the idea of peer pressure is, yeah. is quite prevalent with young people now because you're looking at things like social media yeah. and it's uh, really perpetuating this idea of instant gratification. Yes. So you're looking at 
you know, why don't I have what he's got and why don't I have what she's got? And so therefore, unfortunately, the moral compass of young people is really, really like skewed. Mm -hmm. And now they're willing to do near enough anything and cut yeah. corners and just to be successful. So yeah. we have to counteract that. that. That's very interesting what, you, what you're saying there, because it seems like the experience that you had, it is not that we want other young people to have the same experience, mm -hmm. but you have got it whereby, as you rightly say, to so steer them in the right direction, mm -hmm. ensure that they're on the right path. Yeah. Because, of course, we do not want everybody or young people to say, um, I need this experience in order for me to be like Amani. Mm -hmm. you know, Amani got this experience because a way to also direct yeah. young people. And you know, I went through it so other people didn't, don't have to go through it. Yes. You know, um, the film has been viewed I think 1.6 million times online. Yes. And all the comments and all the engagement I've had about it has been thank you for telling your story because yes. I don't want to do what I was kind of heading yes. to do it. You, you show me an alternative yeah. route, so. Well, that, that's good because you, 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 you've, you've tapped onto the next question, which was um, last year when you were crowdfunding to make the short film, depicting the day you got stopped, production has now been completed, the mm -hmm. film has now been shown, um, viewers are now seeing it. Uh, what was it like? What was the experience like um, getting it all done, you know? It was, uh, it was very, very challenging. Yeah. Um, a, a massive leap of faith last year was all about sacrifice for me. So I, I had about two or three, I think, job offers in the year. Yeah. And I turned all of them down because I knew that this is what I needed to do. Yeah. I saw the vision. You know, I believe that it was part of my purpose to do it. And um, so that's what kept me going. I had a lot of people saying, you know, let's not necessarily start the project now because, you know, there's loads of other components that yeah. are going to go against you. And I just didn't really listen. You know, I'm, I've always been disruptive. Mm. Um, I just haven't always used it for positive things. Yes. So in school, I was a disruptive <laughs> student. Yeah. And as I've got older, I've just become a disruptive adult, but in a positive way. And so I just disrupted, mm. um, you know, the, the kind of status quo that was happening yeah. around knife crime and youth violence yeah. and just decided I'm yeah. going to do it this way. So that's, that's interesting what you said about disruptive. So the disruptive also balances with stubborn. Mm -hmm. So you're stubborn, stubborn in what you want yeah. and your purpose and your Focus. drive. Yeah. Now, that's interesting, Amani, because a lot of young children, black boys for argument's sake, sometimes are deemed to be troublesome. Mm -hmm. And by, by deemed to be troublesome, they are expelled, mm -hmm. going to PRU, and it's a cycle of defeat. Well, that's what happened to me. Yeah. I was expelled from two schools when I was younger. Explain a bit more on um, that, yes. So I, one, of the, one of the conversations I've had recently is about the wording it's permanently excluded. And that is a very, very damaging thing to say to a young person. Yes. I'm permanently excluding you from this environment. And if that young person takes it to heart, then that can be limiting for the rest of their life. Right. Now, I believe a lot of young people that are in school are misunderstood because there's lack of representation in the teachers and the leadership of the school system. Yes. Yeah. So you haven't got black and ethnic minority teachers in leadership that can say, I understand. Where it's coming uh, from. Uh, yeah, you know, I can understand. I was a child like that and I can relate to this young person. Yeah. You've got people coming from outside of London who um, sometimes are coming in exclusively for the money because it's much better pay in yes. London. Um, and sometimes even if they aren't just coming for the money, they don't have that connection with the students because the students don't relate. So someone like myself, who was, as you said, disruptive, yes. someone could have highlighted certain things and said, actually, we can see this young man yeah. is just trying to get the attention of his peers. Mm. But it was just seen as being rude and disruptive. And, yes. you know, that doesn't help someone at that stage. You need early intervention. That, that's so important because... And I also believe a lot, because I've done a couple of programs, I did one here mm -hmm. regarding knife crime solution or this summer, trying to find the solutions. And what you've just um, said is one of the core areas, because it talks about from a child is small. Mm -hmm. I'm a lawyer as well, and uh, I was in court once, and uh, never forget the judge when the, uh, it, it was that child was going to go to the PRU, you yeah. know, and the judge got like this and said, do we have to do that? Mm -hmm. Do we have to do it? Because she has seen the cycle of yeah. defeat in that area. So it is an area which definitely need to, um, to, to step up on Amani. And uh, I'm glad you're tapping into that mm -hmm. because you're looking deep down at some of the, the, the problem and identifying the solution. But, so how do you propose then, based on your experience, we're not talking about knife, but everything has now come to fruition. How are you addressing that bit now with schools and teachers are you getting in there yeah so um yeah. one of the things that i focus on doing now more so full-time um is going into schools prisons people feral units yes. um, and just having conversations with young people 
yeah. and there are six week workshops that I do. Yes. But a lot of the things I'm doing at the moment is showing the film, grabbing the emotion yes. and then having a Q and A and having, I almost call it like big brother sessions where you yes. sit down and you hear young people's questions. You yes. know, you hear someone saying, oh, but you know, how do I do this and how do I do that? And what would you say to someone? Very hypothetical questions, but yes. I know they mean something to the person answering. Yes. So it's a blessing to be in this position because the doors have been opened by mm. the platforms that I've been on, by yes. the success that the film has had. And by the time that we're in, you know, yeah. everyone's kind of talking about this youth violence. And, yeah, yeah. you know, unfortunately, as I said, it's great bad timing because something like what I've created is needed. Yeah. Um, and so I just love the fact that I get to go in and share it around yeah. the country and, and really... Yeah, because I, I've seen you on a few programmes and I've seen how you challenge Victoria Darvish. Hang on a second, let me finish. Yeah, <laughs> you know I, think, I feel like um, I, I've got elders around me. Yes. Like uncles and aunties that yes. have been in the game for quite a long time. Yes. Um, and some of those people have advised me and said, you know what, when you go on these platforms, you have to be careful that obviously they've got I wouldn't say an agenda in a negative way, yes. but they've, they're coming with a narrative that they need to get across yes. in a short period of time. Yes. And if you don't go on there and kind of demand to be listened to without raising your voice, but yes. raising your argument, then mm. people will speak over you. And um, that was a perfect example because yes. what Victoria was saying was, was fair, but I was in the middle of speaking. Yes. And so no disrespect to her, but please let me finish what I'm saying. Yes. And we don't have to get irate and yes. angry. We yes. just say let me finish and you saw what happened yes i, I saw it i saw very clear i think she was saying like we have done that already whatever but you want to make sure that it comes across mm -hmm. you know because we keep saying that we need to listen to the youths yeah. and then sometimes i think we are using the youths mm -hmm. to say it's like it's like sometimes accounts we want to say they are having these consultations yeah so what they do is just make sure five or six person come together mm -hmm. and have a good discussion we had the consultation on x date x date mm -hmm. but it is so important that we move away as you rightly say from the narrative and get to the meat and the yeah. core. You it know? needs to be a bottom-up approach now yes. because you know when I look at the historic way that governments and councils have used funding or you know abused public trust, you know I believe the only way this is going to happen is if it comes and is powered by the communities that yes. are affected by this, and so that has a knock-on effect on. Um, obviously things like going for funding, we should mm. be able to look within our community for funding. Yes. Obviously that's, a, um, you know, that's an aspiration that isn't always realised, yes. but I do believe it's possible. And you're right about that because if you get the funding from the community, you have this free reign, mm. but if you get it from the government or something like that, you are constrained to yeah. where you can actually and, navigate. To and, and also on top of that, the thing about getting funding from the government sometimes is that it has a timeline attached to it. Yes. So I'll give you funding for the next three years, but a lot of the time, from my understanding, and I've only been in the game for a mm. certain amount of time, that there's not sustainable plans in place. Yes. Like there's no business model attached to it yes. that says, okay, do you know what? Thanks for your funding. This is an addition to what we're doing. It's a startup loan. Yes. It's going to allow us to get so far. And then this is the plan that we've got to make this run without you being here and having to constantly chip yes. in. And I feel like it's our responsibility as those that are now in these positions of yeah. leadership to think like that. Fantastic. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break and come back and we're going to tap into some issues about knife crime and police stop and search as well. Thank you. You ever heard? Early birds catch the most worms. So I managed my time and I learned to fly on my own terms. Good daily disciplines was the key to all of my wins. I took everything I knew and I used it to get me in. Any door. I remember my mentor always said that when you get knocked down, never get too comfortable on the ground. I practiced that and it taught me something. To believe in myself and to always keep fighting. I even started to rebuild with my family. Things were going so well, God. So you let that brother stab me. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. And I'm with Amani Simpson talking about knife crime and uh, you know, his experience and the work that he's doing. Very inspiring young man. And I want to dig into a bit more. Amani, welcome again. Thank you. Yeah. I want to dig in a bit more um, before I get into the world knife crime issues and the policies and the police. Representation mm -hmm. within the school. Uh, I feel it's so crucial. It's so core, you know. I'm the father of two children as well, you know, one is seven and one is 11. So they're mm -hmm. going through that motion, so we have to keep monitoring, you know. What, what do you think are some of the 
the key solutions in addressing this um, because of the experience you had? You know, some key tips, maybe three points or whatever. So I would say one of the main things that would have helped me in school was to have um, a mentor that was relatable. Um, I would say as a black male, it should also be a black male for me. That's not the same for everybody. Yes. But just someone that is, I could have, you know, very real and kind of empowerment, com empowerment conversations with. Yes. So I didn't have that. You know, I went to a grammar school that was predominantly white. The leaderships mm. were, you know, also kind of, you know, from a middle class background. Mm. And it wasn't representative of my life. And as much as my mum and dad were great role models, they're too close to you. you. You don't look at them as role models. They become authoritarian figures that are stopping you from doing certain things. I needed someone else that was in the school system balance that it I could balance and was saying the mm. same things my parents were saying, but just in my language. Right. That's right. the best way to describe right. it. Um, I also think I went to an event uh, about a week ago that, you know, we really need to push for more black teachers and senior leaders at gov governor level and also governmental mm. level as well because that's where you really get the representation and, and you know, people that understand the mindsets of some of the young people really sitting in the rooms where decisions are made. Yes, you know, yes. Because if you haven't really got that, then who is really championing us yes. when decisions and policies are being put yes. in place? Um, another thing that I mentioned on Victoria Derbyshire was yeah. about curriculum. You know, mm. We don't speak about it, but we have a curriculum that doesn't cater to everybody in the classroom. Mm -hmm. We learn about people like Henry VIII and uh, you know, different wars and yes. stuff, which are, you know, English history, yes, but yes. that doesn't relate to the full mm. picture of world history. And also we get a tainted view of what black history is yes. because they don't want, as a, a, a society, it's not, well, we don't want to speak about it, it's, yes. you know, it's taboo. Yes. But until we can have honest conversations about the experience of black people in Britain mm. and around the world, without pointing fingers of anger, we just need to know that we are valued and represented yes. properly in these spaces. That's my opinion. Okay, I want to touch into, before I go into the, the parents aspect, because mm -hmm. you, you mentioned something about the authoritarian figure of the parent. Yeah. But then at the same time, that was, stop, don't do that, whatever like that. Mm -hmm. But you needed someone to balance it. But before I go there, I want to talk about this key thing which you mentioned. And you mentioned about the, the representation. Mm -hmm. You mentioned about the fact that um, not being able to, to relate to, Yeah. right? You mentioned about um, the, the the mentor figures. This mentor figure is it a person of your age range? If anything, I think it would. That's one option. So I, yeah. I do believe in peer mentoring. Um, yeah. You know, and young people seeing other young people, talking to them and relating mm -hmm. and building bonds. But I think also you you need people with lived experience. So for mm -hmm. example, when I go into a school and I speak to a young person. I can tell them I've been in your shoes, I've mm. nearly been excluded, or I, sorry, I have been excluded. Yeah. I've walked the journey you're about to take and I'm telling you there's no point in going that way. Yeah. I'm not telling you from a position of um, almost authority in that yeah. sense. I, I am, but I'm not yeah. leading with that. A lot of the time when a teacher will talk to you, oh, I'm going to kick you out of school if you don't do this, you yeah. don't do this, it's going to affect your GCSEs. Mm. I'm telling you facts mm. only because I've been there. And if at that point the young person makes a decision to do exactly the opposite, you have to deal with the consequence. Yes. You know, you, you have to, they, we have to hold young people accountable for the yeah. fact that they make mistakes. Yes. But we have to also let them know that there's other alternative options and we need to let them know from school age, in my opinion. Now, the next point now is that, should the community mm. be the one as well, while the curriculum may not facilitate black history? Yeah. Because if you say black history, um, the, the Chinese may say, well, I want Chinese history, mm. the Asian might say, I want Asian history. The uh, Polish Jews now, and everybody's coming. Polish history. Mm -hmm. Should the, the Jews have their way where they have their own mm -hmm. school and blah blah blah? The Asians as well. Should they musk? Mm -hmm. um, should the black community be the one leading the charge, whereby filling in that gap? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I believe we should be. You know, I, I know there are organisations yeah. and people that are doing it, but I feel like really, as I always say, call a spade a spade. It's, it's more so a lot of the time the Caribbeans that yeah. don't have that connection with history. Mm. You've got the language, you've got culture, you've got economics in the African countries yes. that bring them together. We don't necessarily have the same yes. thing. I'm from Jamaica originally, yeah. and I know that I don't feel connected like that to my J Jamaican heritage. Mm. And as I mentioned, you know, of air, you know, I feel like I'm more connected to Ghana than anything wow. in that sense, you know. And I think it's important that we have those types of conversations yes. because there's still 
issues between Jamaicans and Nigerians yeah, or Ghanaians. Yeah, yeah. Why? Uh, and, 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 that, and that limits yes, yes. the amount of teaching that we can, that cross teaching and that cross empowerment, it limits it. You're right, because sometimes when they say um, the black community, I always qualify to, I always say, there need to be a qualification mm -hmm. because uh, the Somalians might not see things as old. We see yeah, 100%. The Nigerians have uh, never been through slavery. Mm. Jamaicans, Caribbeans like myself, um, uh, your parents came from Jamaica. Um, ancestry is through slavery, mm. a process. It wasn't the start of our um, history. Yeah. Myself, likewise, through slavery. The, the, the South African, okay, through um, apartheid, mm. but didn't go through slavery. So therefore, you're right, there need to be this qualification because sometimes they say Nigerians call um, Caribbeans, mm. um, one of the words they used to say is slave baby. Mm. <laughs> you know? And then um, Caribbean, we would say, you sold us, in a way, because one of the historical bit is that the, the African empires, those mm. kings, also benefited a lot from slavery because the, yeah. the, the white man didn't just go in and take it. They had to have some deal, huh. you know? So, and that's what we don't learn about. We don't learn about But that. at the yeah. same time, as I said, it's important to know the full picture. Yeah, yeah. Because how can you as uh, a teacher or an establishment expect a young person, especially a young black boy, to yes. see anything more of himself yes. if all he sees is you were a slave X amount of years mm. ago? You're not teaching them anything about where he originally came from mm. for whatever reason. Now, unless yeah. there is an agenda against the black people yes. of this nation and around the world to stop us from knowing our history, which yes. obviously I'm hoping that, you know, isn't the case. Wow. But if there is an agenda, yeah. then... So if there isn't an agenda, then we should really be speaking about it. Mm. it should, we're, we're, sit, we're sitting here talking about diversity yeah. uh, across the board, you know, from, from yeah. your, uh, your, you know, your sexual preferences to, you know, even how you identify yourself, but we can't talk about race and we yes. can't talk about history. We should really be in there. Yeah. And as you go back, back to the original point, mm. it should be led by members of the black community from the Caribbean, from Africa, from around the world. It should be led by us, not from the other side. It, 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 is, it is interesting, Mane, and, um, and these are like pressure points mm. which coming out from this show, um, which we hear it, but it needs to be fueled. But what is very impressive, mm. as it says, um, a young man who is very inspirational, I, I believe, coming from you as well, is good. Mm, thank you. Now, parents. Mm -hmm. You mentioned about the authority and figure of the parent and then the mentor there. Yeah. Do you believe that parents are failing? Um, they said, Amani, in a recent children's um, commissioner's report, there are 27,000 children they believe are in gangs. Mm -hmm. I flipped the script on my social media post and said, if there's 27,000 children, where are the 54,000 parents? Mm. Do you think parents are failing? I, it's a difficult one, and I don't mm. feel like I can answer conclusively, but what I yeah. would say is or that... your views, you know? Yeah, my, my views of this yeah. is that... I sorry, think sorry it's, a too, it's too broad brush. I mean, yeah. you know... I yeah. think, but do you know what? I think, to answer the question, yeah. I think there are many parents that are failing their kids for mm. whatever reason, whether that mm. be the environments that the, the children have grown up in where the parents could have done better yes. for the child before the child was born yes. and certain decisions weren't made and now the child is growing up in, in a particular environment. Yes. There's also environments where children are growing up and they're just seeing bickering and hate between their parents. That mm. has an effect. Mm. You're also growing up in environments where parents are not listening to their children, mm. they're speaking at them. So in those environments, 100%, you can always say a parent can do better to understand their child mm. and give them the best environment of love to grow up in. And he's not a single parent. And, yeah. it's not, and, 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 and the thing about it, as I said, yeah. even single parents, says, you know, it's all about perspective. So there's yeah. single parents out there that do amazing yeah. jobs with their kids and yeah. are really engaging. And although things, although things are hard, their kids turn out to be, you know, I wouldn't even say A star, but yeah. just A class people yeah. in general. Excellent. But then on the other side, you're looking at, um, you know, people that are really engaging with their kids mm. and their kids make decisions. So, you know, as much as their parents love them, like I came from a loving home, yes. but you can't prepare me for a school environment that mm. is riddled with people that don't understand where they're going and that's who I'm aspiring to be like. Yes, There's yes, nothing yes. that you're going to tell me at home that's going to prepare me for that at school. Yes. And so what a parent's biggest responsibility in my mind is to protect the child as much as possible and allow them to trip over and graze their knee sometimes mm knowing that actually we've got your back. Yes. We've got the plaster ready for you. All yes. you have to do is come and ask us.
and just make sure um, the school don't ask silly questions and call social service. Yeah, well, Which you know, but the thing, <laughs> the thing, <laughs> but the thing yeah, about the yeah. thing about the school is again, the school has a particular place in all of this, and yes. schools are based off past experiences and, and you know best practice. So yes. if you you can't always say that what the school does is is the best interest of the child yeah. sometimes it's just learned behavior and you yes. need to do that to protect them yeah. but essentially I, I think that this we live in a world now where communication and you know kind of mm. cross agency conversations are not had as best as they could be and we yeah. just need to learn yeah. how we can communicate no, that, that's better. very good that, that's very good and, and it is something that people actually um, listen to and, and get some sort of knowledge on that because mm. Everything that I believe is important now is about finding these solutions mm -hmm. and through these discussions. Now, another bit now, the, the government is now cracking down on knife and gun crime. Mm. Um, um, one MP recently suggested that they should um, put chips or put some sort of um, tracker yeah. on knife. And <laughs> it, they have laugh after, laugh after him. Um, do you think that the policies and scheme being proposed are far reaching enough? You know? Will they have the desired impact, or do you think more is needed? Um, and if so, what should our government be doing as well? A uh, hundred million, the chancellor was earmarked to help fight crime with the police. The mayor said uh, it doesn't help in getting more police on the, on the ground, but it helps with um, overtime and so like that. Mm -hmm. Do you think the, the government is on top of the issue? I think the easiest way to answer that is the government have a lot of things on their plate mm. to deal with right now. Mm. We're dealing with Brexit and yes. this whole idea of leaving order, order, you know, everything. <laughs> you know, we're we're we're, we're yeah. at a tipping point in our in our history as a country. Yes. What I would say is that I can't necessarily trust and rely on people that have never had the lived experience to make decisions about people mm. um, on the other side of the tracks. Yes. You know, there's always going to be a misunderstanding and a miscommunication, and I feel like unless we as a community are involved in these conversations mm. organically and really part of the decision making, it's just going to be a tick box exercise. Yes. And so these 100 million, these 200 millions is great, but if the organisations that are getting them have absolutely no connection to the problem and yes. are just, you know, kind of the original establishment type of uh, organisations, then it's a waste of money. Mm. So again, as I mentioned before, you know, we need to be able to have our own funding and income streams yeah. and sustainable projects because if this problem has been rife in our communities and up mm. and down the country for how many years? You know, gangs have been around for 200 years. Yes, yes, yes. You know, and it's all based off things like poverty. Yes. And it's based off, you know, this, this need for, for quick gratification. Mm. These are the things you need to address. You need to address the mindset. A lot of these people are coming from adverse childhood experiences. Yes. It's not just as simple to say, let's put more police on the street. Let's deal with why they're going through that. A lot mm. of these kids are going through anger, manage, uh, anger management yeah, problems yeah. or they need counselling or they need... Dispute uh, resolution. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. things like opportunities. For example, I look at young men that are trying to do drug dealers as very entrepreneurial. Mm. You know, the, the environments that they're growing in and that they're trying to survive in, a lot of the corporate guys could never walk a day in their shoes. And, and also, isn't it that the, the gang so-called leaders or whatever like that, playing a fundamental role in, with authority in mentoring younger boys. Yeah, but I think it's, in a way, it's a, but to a certain extent, yeah. but again, you know, everyone's got a responsibility. Yes. I see, um, uh, you know, especially from a music or entertainment perspective, there's a lot of rappers that are, are, are big men, you know, mm. and they talk a lot of wild and kind of very dangerous things in their music that then is fed back to young people that yeah. look like them and look like their kids. Yes. And there's no one holding anybody accountable for that. Mm. And there's no alternative. It's if you want to listen to hip hop and R and B and a particular type of music, unless it's gospel music, there's only a particular theme you're gonna get. Yes. Prevalent every yes. day in your kind of radio and, and, and music world. So yeah. I just feel like we need to have various different conversations about how do we counteract it and as I said it mm. needs to come from us. It can't we can't look outside of our own remit. I'm looking at my time and I'm also pulling things from you. That's cool. Stop and search. That's cool. Stop and search? Yes. I'm going to throw them at you. No, that's fine. Right. Stop <laughs> yeah. and search. Um, mm. There's a place for it. Mm. You know, of course, we want to keep young people safe. There's a place for it. But I think that there needs to be a very clear um, mm. understanding of young people of their rights. Because, mm. of course, on the other side of this, police are known to sometimes bully their yeah. way into these situations. Yeah. So, you know, I think... Stop and search can definitely be part of the solution, but it needs to be how, a very how holistic. How it's handled. Yeah, and everything it, like it that. can't just be let's add yeah. more people, uh, more police yeah. to the street, 
and then therefore you're getting more kind of young men kind of stereotyped and put it, that's not acceptable. I, I hope I can be able to get a clip on, on this show here, but the, the weatherman, mm. you remember that weatherman? Yeah, yeah. Alex yeah. Uh, Beresford, I think. Beresford. Yeah. That's a typical example of getting all these guys having this discussion mm. and not one of them have any idea of the environment. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason why he was forced and compelled putting his job on the, actually when I, but why, but why should we say he's putting his job on his... I'm not saying that you're yeah. right in saying that, but, but he I'm, should be... I'm not the only one you've ever said that. But, he's, but, that, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. For me, the way I see it is that if someone is not representing yes. your people properly, and you should be entitled to your own opinion. Yeah. And I think, of course, there's forums to do that. But what he did in that moment is he stood up and he said, I can't accept this. Look how many yeah. people throughout history have done that. Yeah. You know, you look at uh, Colin Kaepernick, who took yeah. a knee in America... Yeah. You know, these Rosa people Parks, are Rosa yeah, Parks, yeah. Martin Luther King, mm. Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, all these different people yeah. that have come before and been bold. And those are the change gamers. These those are the, are the, game, are the changers. game changers. Game changers. These are the game changers. These are yes. the ones that everyone will have an opinion about. Because, but history will remember yeah. them. Because I'll be honest with you, I, I made a comparison mm. and uh, Idris Elba is great. And mm. I, I, I compared Idris Elba message and I compared with that guy. And, and I went to debate with some guys. That guy was more powerful, mm. you know, because he, he interjected into a discussion and said, stop. He's like um, public enemy number one. Yeah. Stop, don't stop, that, stop, that. You know what I mean? But I, you know. I think the thing about Idris Elba, for example, yeah. someone in that position, yeah. is that he's an entertainer. Yes, he's someone yes. that has a great level of influence. It's great to see him yeah. speaking about things like mm. knife crime and the effects of what's going on with young people. Yeah. But when you get to a particular level, my favourite saying is learn, earn, return. Yes. Now, it's going to be important for me as someone coming up after Idris, to look at Idris yeah. and say, okay, what are you going to do now you've had a video that's gone viral on WhatsApp? Yeah. What are you going to do? The next, me, what's the, the next project? The next phase. Yeah, the next phase. How yeah. you, you know, you come from Hackney originally, and again, this isn't directly yeah. aimed at him, yes. but you come from somewhere like Hackney yeah. where young boys are struggling with similar things to what you did. Yeah. What are you going to do now? I, I have to ask you one question before I go. Mm -hmm. Brexit. Yeah. What do you think about Brexit? I see Brexit <laughs> as a shambles from the perspective of yes. the political parties because... They lied to us and mm. gave us a particular uh, viewpoint mm. in order for people to make an uninformed choice, an uninformed choice, shall I say. Yes. What I would say is that with everything, there's always opportunities. Yes. And so we have to look for those opportunities and find mm. ways to survive. So what, please. Yeah, no, I was going to say, we have to yeah. find ways to survive. I'd say that enterprise mm. is definitely something that is going to move us forward. We have to look at digital things. We have to look at, mm. sorry, not digital things, digital projects and yes. opportunities. And I, I remember seeing something come out the other day. I think it's the 2020 skills list. Yeah. So anyone watching should research that and see what's on that list and just make sure that that's part of your character and what you, you actually bring to the table. So what you're saying right there is whatever comes, remain our goal, we need to really um, empower ourselves as but, much as possible. Yeah, the bottom line we have to look yeah. at is that, to be honest, in my opinion, the decision was made long before we ever went to the voting yeah. um, booths. And so from that is the, my opinion, you yeah. need to make sure you're able to be sustained and look Ordained. after your family. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. But before I let you go, I want to ask you one question. Mm -hmm. And I know my research, my, my people are actually saying, uh, shut down now, Sibra. <laughs> What's your favourite mantra or, or a positive word that you can... Um, you can empower people, like, you know, something that keeps you going. I've, got, best, yeah. I've got two, to be yes, fair. Please, the first yeah. one is learn, earn, return. Mm -hmm. And I said that before in the interview. Yes. The second one is pray like it's up to God and work like it's up to you. Right. So learn, earn, return. Mm -hmm. And pray like it's up to God and work like it's up to you. Awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. And um, I tell you what, this is part one. I'm going to actually get back Imani because uh, we got a lot of things which have been opened up as well and uh, we'll have to come back but Imano, listen I want to thank no you problem. so much for coming on the show no yeah and um, any last word you want to say anything you want to share do you know what I would just encourage anyone watching yeah. you say look at the camera yeah, it's kind of, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> I would encourage anyone watching just to do what you can in your remit you know there's young people around that mm. need your influence and your empowerment and whatever you can do in the fight to allow us as, uh, as human beings to live more cohesively and more in love, just do it. You know, as I said, it's, mm. it's all about how we can help each other survive because that's the game. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you have heard the man, Amani Simpson. As I said when I opened, um, we have Amani, a young man with quite an inspiring story. And uh, it is inspiring indeed. And I've listened and I've just, you know, there are times sometimes I don't need to say anything. And it's <laughs> one of those moments because 
We've always said we need to let the youth speak. Um, as you know, I've had these different forums, Solution Oriented Summit, you know, one here and one also in Crystal Palace where everybody's speaking. And most of them are adults, but we need to get the youths and to hear what they're saying. But I think in the Bible in Job, I think one time there, there was a young man who spoke and they said, oh, shut up, you're young. And he said, there's a breath of inspiration within a man or so, a God-given ability like a wisdom. And I believe that we are missing something if we are not giving the youths a platform where they can actually speak mm -hmm. and whereby they can actually empower because, you know, he made a connection. He made a connection with God. He made a connection at that low point whereby it was do or die. Mm -hmm. And there have been many stories like that, many stories through history where people actually made a pact with God mm -hmm. and said, if you, I will. Mm -hmm. and, and I think maybe, that's what I might name this, name this show, if you, I will. And people say, what does it mean? So ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for coming on today and watching the show. And I want to thank you so much for listening. And also please like and share this video. Share it around. Um, check out the, the YouTube channel, Silburn TV, uh, Facebook. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. And thanks, Imani. No problem. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Awesome. Take care. Thank I'm not ready to die. How can I stand for something but still be fighting for my life? I need a second chance, God. This can't be the end of my time. I've tried it my way and it's landed me here. I want to try this faith road where it's only you that I fear. I want to follow your guidance this time. Please draw near me. I ain't got much fight left and I'm starting to feel weary. I'll conquer my fears and have your power flowing through me. I'll hold my hands up high and say, God, you can use me. I'll finish what I started and I'll be more positive. I promise it. I'll steer kids off this path and be the role model they need. I'll create a new arc and I'll empower their dreams. I didn't fulfill my purpose, man. How was I so blind? This bad boy image leads to nothing but pain. I feel so empty inside, so cold. All the things I could have achieved with my abilities and all the beautiful places I'll never get to see. I just need one more chance to make you proud, Heavenly Father. Give me that second chance. Please. Thank you so much for joining us on The Silver and Show. And uh, of course, what I'd like you to do is to like the videos, share the videos, and subscribe to the channel. Let people know about it. But the important thing is also to comment. Let us get your comment, let us get your views, so we can understand how to even please you better, ladies and gentlemen. So, as I said, share, like, subscribe. Ah, thank you. I saw you there. You subscribed and you shared. Thank you so much. See you next time.